In this Elder Scrolls Online video, we're going to be taking a look at the new changes made to the champion system. Uh, this is something I promised yesterday. They have made some sweeping changes to this system for better or worse. And in this video, we're going to look at exactly what they've done. So the first thing to talk about here, obviously, is that they've lifted the cap from 810 champion points, which has been fixed there for about a year and a half, two years, something like this. It is now lifted all the way to 3,600. So players that have had a significant amount over 810 are going to see a significant boost to the performance of their character, or at least compared to other players that don't have that many champion points. They have also removed nine of the 12 trees. There are now only three trees. There are Warfare, Crafting, and Finesse. These are the three trees. Warfare is blue, Crafting is green, and Finesse is red. As you might have guessed, Warfare has to deal with combat. This is things like Maximum Magicka, Maximum Stamina, Critical Chance, Healing, anything that you would use during combat is located here. Finesse has more to do with resource recovery, incoming damage prevention, and things that would keep you alive in combat, mostly defensive bonuses. And crafting has more to do with things that happen outside of combat, like stealing or selling things to merchant for more money, or crafting, harvesting faster, or getting more resources from nodes. So anything that happens outside of combat, the other gameplay of the game, that tree is going to affect. Another thing you might have noticed is at the top of the screen there, there is a bar that contains three separate sections with four circles in each one. Here you're going to slot some champion abilities that can only be slotted, and you can only have four from each tree activated at once. This means that you're going to pick and choose what's slotted depending on which activity you're doing. This does not apply to all champion skills or champion abilities where you put points. Only some of them will say they need to be activated to be used, and it's going to tell you which ones these are so you get a feel for what these are, but you're only going to be able to slot four from each color when you do this. Now, there are two things that make this system a bit different besides all the things I just mentioned, and the first is that you have to unlock certain nodes on the tree by placing points in other ones. It sort of starts in the center and goes outward from there, unlocking as you spend points and further and further nodes away. So you can't just place them wherever you want, and you're going to have to spend some points at least to unlock some of the ones along the outer edges of each constellation. And secondly, some of the nodes on these trees you only get benefits from if you place at least a certain amount of points, and that means if it says 50 points to unlock, you have to spend all 50 points in that node or you get zero benefit at all. You don't get a diminishing return benefit, you get none whatsoever. That is a huge departure from the way things have been handled in the past with the champion skill trees, and it's one that's going to create a divide between players, predominantly between people who have a certain amount of champion points and don't. There's going to be a minimum, I don't know exactly what the meta is now you need in order to have you know, exactly what you had before, and it's probably going to be around double or so the champion points that you needed to have before to be the same power. And, you know, if you think about it, maybe that number is like 1,700 or 1,600 or whatever that number is. If you're 1,550 and you don't reach that number, you're going to be significantly less powerful than someone who's 1,600 because of that all or nothing commitment to some of these champion skills. Now, how exactly that's going to affect the game is anyone's guess, but there should be drastic consequences in PvP. This is going to separate players from... You know, if you're a 900 champion point versus a 1500 champion point player, you're going to be way, way less powerful, way, way less powerful. And for new players starting out in PvP, this is going to be devastating to them. This is going to deter them from playing and probably shove them into the non-champion point campaigns until they've gained enough champion points so that they can be competitive. Obviously, one of the things that Zenimax is going to be doing is speeding up the rate at which you get champion points because they realize this is happening. But I have no idea exactly how fast that's going to be. Previously, the thing about champion points is that they increased your base stats for every champion point you place. So when you put points in the red tree, you gain more health. When you put points in the green tree, you gain more stamina. When you put points in the blue tree, you gain more magicka. That is now gone from this system. But what they've done to you know compensate for that is that they've raised your base stats by about double what they were. So you shouldn't see too much of a change in the overall performance of your character, at least on the stat front. You're going to see it more on the champion side of things. Basically, what we've seen here is that the champion system is going to be much more effective than it was, but it's going to take longer for you to reach that effect. What I find most interesting about this whole scenario is that Zenimax has basically taken the stance by locking things at 810 for over a year now, that they want new players to not feel like they're falling so far behind players that have been playing this game for years, and so they lock the cap, giving them a chance to catch up. However, you were still gaining experience in your champion skill points uh, during that time, even if you couldn't apply them. It was slower, yes, but you were still gaining them. And by you know, basically reversing that course, they're basically now saying, we want existing players to feel like it's meaningful to them, and these new players are going to have to catch up. Personally, as a player who's been playing this game for a long time, I like that, but I can see how players that are new to this game might feel a bit underpowered, particularly in PvP compared to them, 
and how they may get glanced over for, you know, trials and things like this. However, you know, most trial guilds are very selective anyway, so I'm not sure how much of an impact that's going to make. You know, further exacerbating this, something that I didn't mention is the fact that a lot of the nodes, you know, you have to place 20 points into to get any benefit at all, or 40 points gets you a little bit more. So if you have 39, you get nothing. So there's going to be a lot of players out there that are just under these power creeps. There's going to be breakpoints where the person who's at 500 is drastically more powerful than the person at 499, or the person at 1,000 is drastically more powerful than the person at 999. I don't know exactly what these are because I haven't gone through them all and tested everything out. And there are people out there that have far more time than I do to test all these things. But there's going to be these breaks where, you know, you're going to be like tier one, tier two, tier three, and you're going to fall into one of those somehow. So it'd be interesting to see how that all plays out over time. One thing I do want to mention, though, is that this is all still on the public test server. None of this has actually made it to live server, and none of it is scheduled to go live until the next DLC, which is in March. So there is still time to provide Zenimax with feedback. Today is the first day anyone has gotten to see how this system will work exactly and what the nodes are and how everything works. So if you want to provide feedback to them, make sure that you do it because you have a chance to change this system in a way that makes sense or provide them feedback. Please do it in a constructive way, though, because I find that you know, developers, they respond better to constructive criticism, and they don't respond well to, you know, negativity. So if you have thoughts about how to do this, make sure you make them heard, because you do have a chance to control how this is going to go. The last thing I want to mention that's coming with this new DLC coming in March that's just gone under the public test server is the way armor is handled. The light armor, medium armor, and heavy armor passives have all been revamped and changed and overhauled again. So you may want to take a look at these because it's going to affect the way things play. They've created this rock, paper, scissors format now where basically light armor trumps heavy armor, heavy armor trumps medium armor, and medium armor trumps light armor. So if you're playing, light armor is strong against medium. It helps bypass physical resistance a lot easier. Heavy armor bypasses medium armor easier, and medium armor bypasses light armor easier. I don't know what this means for PvP because not a ton of players run heavy armor in PvP. And as far as I can tell, playing as a light armor character in PvP, stamina has always had the edge uh, medium armor builds have always had the edge on light armor characters. Now they're going to have even more of an edge. I don't know what that's going to do to PvP balancing, but that's something also to take a look at and also something to provide your feedback on. That's all for this video. We'll probably do one more video on Elder Scrolls Online in March covering the exact changes that are coming with the update when they've been finalized. Uh, that's not going to be the last Elder Scrolls Online video you see on this channel, but that's probably the next one that you'll see. And we'll tell you then, you know, what changes have actually made it into the live version, whether this system gets tweaked between now and March, and what that, you know, what those might be if that occurs, and also what's happening with the Light Armor system, and any other changes you need to know about, such as the new sets that are coming, how those look, anything else that's being changed in the game that you might want to hear about. 